Welcome back to Liberty Tobacco in our series where which we covered cigars and we gave you a bit of a tour of the shop last time you saw us on our uh, website and uh, it's good to be back here and uh, with Ben and uh, Aussie John as they still call me. He still says he can't hear the accent. A couple things if you do want to find us, uh, we are on Facebook. Of course, you can also check us out at libertytobacco.com. And uh, you can also check out uh, my YouTube channel, which is just Liberty 4343, and there's kind of links in between all of those. Today, John, tell them what the focus is going to be on. Cutters. Cutters. As you can see all along here, we've got uh, basically nearly every style of cutter that uh, is made for the cigar industry. And, uh, and we can, we've got to share a bit of our experiences, the correct way how to cut a cigar, and, uh, and some of the products we do like. and. Uh, uh, cutters have had a bit of a journey over the years. They start, usually a lot of companies start out with a very good quality metal, good quality cutter. Uh, sometimes they go blunt after repeated use for a long time, but some cutters stay sharp for years and years, and that's, that's the sort of cutter that I like. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, something that stays sharp. I think what we'll do is, um, actually, uh, Yankee Joe, you want to go grab, can you grab another, just an inexpensive one of, of these guys for us real quick? Because I do want to show the wrong the wrong way to cut one of these two. I just thought of that as well. Just which one did you recommend, Mike? The uh, V-cut. V-cut. That's I was, what I was recommended by Yeah, me. I was going to cut, I was going to show the incorrect cut on that too. If you Can you just grab an inexpensive, like, uh, what is it, the JM no, 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 cigar no. or something, something not too, no, no. Not too costly. Um, I guess what we'll do is we'll start off and maybe just talk about a, a, the few different types of cuts. And then we'll kind of get maybe into the specifics of the cutters. I think the uh, see, I already messed thank up you with Joe. the thank you, Yankee Joe. Go Yankees! <laughs> uh, I think some of the things that most people think of when they think of a cutter is probably your classic, what we call just a straight cut or a guillotine cut. This one is uh, from Zeno or Davidoff is the parent company, and it's a company that we carry. We've carried for a long time. When I first started working here years ago. Zeno made sort of the high-end cutter that we had available that was sort of really practical where you could put both fingers in, it had both blades coming down, it wasn't a single blade chopping it. Thank you, Mike. So that's kind of the first style. The other style, and this is a really old one, and this is literally a bullet cutter. They made this, uh, this is one of the early kind of bullet style cutters which takes a little plug out of the cigar. We'll talk about these a little bit later on. And uh, let's see, I guess we also have why don't you show the, maybe the scissor cutter there? You yeah, can pull the up the scissor thing. cutter. Which we'll talk about the benefits of those and kind of the negatives. And then uh, pretty recently, although they've been around for quite a while, a lot of guys uh, with the help of uh, Mike, the manager here at Liberty Tobacco uh, South, the cat's eye cut or the V cut has been become really, really popular. And this is a really nice one from Zycar, which we'll talk about today. And actually, before we do anything, I think I'm going to light up a stick. This is one that Mike just gave me. This is the Tobacco Association of America, La Florida Minicana Double Pressed Maduro. Do you approve of it, Mike? Mike gave it to me, so we'll check it out here. One I'm of gonna, his favorite cigars. I'm going to use a Zeno cutter. This was a Zeno cutter from a number of years ago that I bought. I remember I saved up and bought it. And I forgot what the steel is even on this this blade. It's extremely sharp, uh, not a cheap cutter. I think this thing was at the time probably close to 250 or something insane like that. Uh, but you notice one of the things that I when I cut this off, all I did was just cut the tap, the cap off. And you can see that's one of the things that a lot of people do is they get a little crazy and they start cutting too much off. And I guess the key is is that if you look at the cigar, what you want to do is where the cigar starts to curve down to where it becomes straight, you kind of want to cut off right above that. So you don't want to be cutting really down on the straight part of the cigar, if that makes any sense. You want to cut right below where the cap kind of just touches the straight edge. So would you say, Ben, when they do roll cigars, they put the cap on first and they roll the outer leaf on top of that? Um, usually they, the, no, it's the other way it's around. It's the other way around. Yeah, they, it's the other way. The cap is usually the last thing that they do to finish off the cigar. That's the cap. And I think Mike can is tell that, you, because he visited the, the factories down in Dominican Republic and also, were you in Honduras or Nicaragua? Honduras. Honduras. The cap is the last thing that goes on. Um, one of the things that's indicative about a Cuban cigar is you'll notice they almost all have what's called a triple cap. It's like three layers, mm -hmm. where some cigars like a... It's got like a double cap, this one here. Yeah, and the Anniversario by Padron, they're, they're kind of notorious for a very thin wrapper and a very thin cap, and it's one of those things where, for me, 
using certain types of cutters on the Padron and Rosario line, I like to stick with something that's that's probably not a bullet cutter, but do something like a straight cut off the top. Um, I'll use this as, actually I'll use this right here. This is another type of lighter uh, that we carry here at this shop. This is a Lotus brand. And some of the lighters that we carry, this is also a Lotus, they also will have a built-in cutter. I recommend not using these as an everyday cutter because if the blade does get dull, you would then have to send it into the factory or someplace else to get it sharpened. So I usually tell people it's like an emergency cutter where if you find yourself without your regular cutter, you can use it. Unfortunately, a bullet cutter is not the best type of cut for most cigars, especially if it's something like a Bellicoso or a real small cigar. You can get away with it, but I wouldn't really recommend it. This one is, I wonder, I don't even think this one has gas in it, so it's an older one, so I'll have to use this, this Lotus right here. Now, cutting cigars is, is like a, it's a bit of a personal preference. Um, you know, we, as you said, we've got the bullet cutter, we have the V cutter, we have the straight blade cutter. Um, personally, I like the straight blade myself. Uh, I don't usually go for the punch because it leaves a, a smaller space for the, for the, the intake and the outtake of, of, of the smoke and, and sometimes that can build up with some tar and it gets a little bit nasty tasting after a while. So I like a good, the larger surface of my cut so I, I get a good pull uh, when I'm smoking the cigar. Exactly like what I've got here where I've just cut the cap off and uh, I get a good smoke and, and usually the tar doesn't build up as much as say a punch, but that's just my personal preference. There are guys here, I know a couple of folks here that will bite the end off the cigar They'll just use their teeth. That's kind of their thing. I know. Um, Been watching the movies a bit too much. Of well, no, like Tree Trimmer Steve. That's his favorite way. He doesn't even use it. He always has used it like that. I've seen a lot of guys. I think even Bob Lincoln will. Um, he's one of our regular customers. He'll go kind of old school. In the old days, they used to sell, and I really haven't seen too many of them now. But all they'll do is take something, even like a pencil, a sharp pencil, or like our uh, Havana Savers, where they'll just poke a hole in the cigar. There are some cigars that we sell here that actually already have a hole punched in it, and that's, for some people, for me, I think, in, and along with Aussie John, it's just, it's too small of a hole to get a really good draw, but like John said, it's just kind of personal preference. I think what we'll start off with is, we'll kind of start off with the kind of the old school um, various cutters. This is one that we carry in the shop, and it runs about $6, and it just, you know, has our Liberty Tobacco logo on it. It's uh, made by Savoy. This is sort of the, the same cutter here, but just branded differently. And it's one of those things that when we go to the retail show, you can find things like this where people you know, sell cutters. But for $5.95, these things, it, it's amazing how good they actually are. In the old days, I have one of the old ones. This is what, when I first started here years ago, this was the standard of disposable cutters. It was like, a, it's literally a razor blade that's cut and it is extremely sharp and it will do the job but unfortunately because the blade is so fine it'll wear down extremely quickly and end up just mashing the cigar especially since it's only cutting from one side and as you push it if it's dull it just starts mashing the cigar john's got one in his hand i think it's from mean sardine is the company that's correct and um that one's got a logo tell them what that one is too that's something this logo special. that we have here is the pure platinum gentleman's club Curdy Mesa, not that we're uh, endorsing or plugging the company, but uh, well, I think they carry our cigars. So. They certainly do. Yeah, so, so we, yeah, we, we should plug, plug them. them. Yeah, pun the pun. So that was good. <laughs> uh, so the, these uh, cutters are available to have any printing that you like on the cigar. Uh, as I said, this company decided to get their logo and their uh, name printed on this cutter, and we are able to. Uh, get those uh, printed up as well. It's a good solid cutter. And what I've noticed here with uh, these particular cutters, you see the, the solid blade on the other side here, so you've got a good solid cut. And I find that these uh, cutters that uh, need to have a good solid grounding in the, in the housing, when they're sort of attached to the plastic housing in a flimsy way, they tend to not last too long. But these cutters do have a good solid housing there very important for that. Mike just handed me one of our um, Liberty Cutters that's very similar to this one right here. And these are, what, what the way I would recommend these, where if somebody said, hey, I'm having a wedding, or I'm having an event, where they want to lay a bunch of cutters out on a table, these will definitely do the trick. Because they'll go through, I don't know how many cigars, people always ask, and I always tell them, you know, it depends on 
who's cutting it and how many and whatnot, but they're good for the purpose of being essentially semi-disposable. This is made by a company called Clip It, but I, I've used them in their, what I usually do with these, these are the perfect ones you leave in the car. However, I have left some of these in the car only to find that they've, I've come back and they've been completely warped. But the thing is, you're only out a, a couple of dollars versus being out something, you know, $40 if it's in your golf bag and you drop it on the course and you lose it. So that's a, a good alternative. On the other kind of like higher end of the straight cutters, we have this company right here, which I've talked about before. This is a custom one from, this one's kind of cool, it's got a skull on it. It's for the cigar company called Room 101. And this is made by the company Zycar. And Zycar is spelled X-I-K-A-R. Uh, they are a great company. Uh, recently, they've done something where um, they guarantee it for life, which is really cool. I've actually had personal... little card there, Ben. Yeah. Let's, let's put this on top. We'll put that on there. There you go, you want to show that off there? Unconditional lifetime. Is it warranty? Warranty. warranty Lifetime warranty. Life. I've actually sent in, uh, there was a cutter that we had here from Cohiba. It was part of like a, a set that Cohiba had. And we'd sold out of the cigars and I just said, okay, I'm going to use the cutter. And eventually what happened was one of the springs inside broke. All I did was you can print out on their website a form. You fill it out. It's very simple. You drop it in the mail. You send it to them. And they sent it back, I don't know, within like a week. And it was a brand new cutter. They didn't fix it. They just dropped another like cutter in there. This one's really nice, and they, they range in price from about $30 on up. Uh, the more expensive ones will have, for example, I think there's one that has mammoth scales on it, so of course that's going to be very expensive. I think Cedric's got one of those. This is probably my favorite. I, I got this last year when the guys went to the retail show, and I said, hey, I made a request that they could pick one up. This is the Maya by Zycar, and there is a huge difference. It's not just the weight but it's also the, the cutting steel and just the, the action itself is a lot smoother. Not that the $30 one isn't great, it's just that this one, it's a lot more money, but you do get what you pay for and it's guaranteed for life or warranted for life. And it came actually with, uh, you sent in a little card and they sent this you know Stingray or Skate case for it, which is kind of cool as well. But What does that retail for? This retails for $250, I believe. But the case, I think, retails on its own for something like $29. They were really cool. I sent in my card. They didn't send it to me. I waited and waited like a couple of months. I called the lady up at Zycar and I said, hey, I, I sent one in. I, and she apologized profusely. And it was literally at my house within like four days. Okay, boop, here you go. So I can vouch from my own personal experience that Zycar has taken care of me. I know that they fix lighters. We've had guys, especially with some lighters when they're brand new, like the Trezo Triple, which we'll talk about when we look at our lighters again, uh, that they will take care of the company. It's not to say that everything they make is perfect like any company, but they at least take care of their customers and the stuff that we carry in the shop. We've kind of we've kind of whittled it down to or whittled it down to a certain number of products that we really like versus carrying an entire range of products of, you know, 50 different styles of cutters and 50 different styles of lighters. We've narrowed it down to maybe you know, 10 different cutters and lighters combination. So that's kind of cool. Ben, I would say this particular cutter here is the best cutter I have ever used. As I said, I like straight cuts. It, it's it's heavy, it's solid. It, when, when you cut it, you feel the engineering and the weight and it just slices through a cigar so effort, effortlessly. Um, great cigar. It's quite an interesting design on here as well. But uh, very great cutter this one is, yeah. One of so my there favorites. You go. Yeah, it's a, it is a very cool cutter. And, you know, Cedric, like I said, he was the one that had it. And as soon as he had it, I was instantly smitten. I went, oh, I have to get that. It was one of those things where I picked it up. I snipped that off there. Yeah. And the thing is, once again, if you're looking at the scar, where you see the cap starts to curve down to the straight area, that's kind of what you're looking to cut off. But I always tell people less is more because you can always go back and recut like that one is a little bit too little. I want to cut just a tad bit more, and there it goes. And just with that slightest bit of effort, where you have a really good cutter, it doesn't mash the cap at all. And you really want to try to preserve as much of the cigar as possible. One of the main reasons is, or being, is if you cut too much off, you're kind of defeating the purpose of it that. Starts to unravel. Yeah, it starts to unravel. That's a practical purpose. Where if it cuts too much, it'll unravel. And the other part reason is, is that certain cigars. 
when you have a cigar that's a certain length and a certain girth, you know, ring gauge as we call it, if you cut too much down on it, you're kind of defeating the purposes. You'll see with some shaped cigars like a Bellicoso or a Pyramid or um, a Figurado, those have a very specific shape. Cutting too much off, there's there are customers here who constantly will cut off too much. And I, I don't really have the heart to say anything to them because that's their own personal preference. However, there's a store up in uh, the Bay Area, uh, Mission Pipe and Tobacco, uh, and it's it's very much like Liberty Tobacco, but this is up in the Bay Area, and they have a great display. This is probably going back 15 plus years where they had all the wrong ways to cut a cigar lined up on a piece of wood, and it was a way to sort of tell customers, be careful what you're doing to the cigar. You're you're taking a cigar that could be anywhere from you know five dollars on up and essentially defeating the purpose of having that specially shaped cigar. So it's something else that we're kind of, that I'm interested in, in teaching people about, but I don't want to step on anybody's toes because it's not really my place to tell them unless they kind of ask. But it is one of those things, I'm sure John has seen it too, where you look at it. Another thing people do, which I almost forgot to tell you, I think you know what I'm going to talk about, the fellation of a cigar, fellating a cigar. I'm not even going to do it. There are guys, <laughs> we've all seen it. None of us do it here. It's one of those kind of old man things, and, and I'm not to say that to be mean, to, to be a, a person who's no an offense. ageist, but no offense at all. I've seen guys, and they'll take the cigar, and they'll wet the whole cigar, and they'll do this whole ritual, and I think maybe it's from a period of time where cigars might not have been properly humidified, and maybe that was a way that they thought that if they wet the cigar that it wouldn't come unraveled. There's absolutely no reason to do that whatsoever. It's disgusting. Uh, John knows my personal preference here at the store. I see people... Oh, mm. and then they reach over and they grab the shop cutter. It's that shop little... cutter ends up in the bin as soon as we say that. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. At Liberty Tobacco, <laughs> it gets washed, sterilized, or something. And John will look at me and I'll say, "Here, John, you can use my cutter." It's just one of those things where people get this kind of notion that they've got to wet the entire cigar. I don't really see too many people do that anymore. That was something that was very popular years ago, but not so much. So. I don't know, can you think of anything else with yeah, you have any other straight uh, one, cutters? One, of, <clears throat> one oh. of the other main things, which uh, another cigar cutter that we want to introduce to you. <clears throat> Let's show this me. one real quick too. This is this is from a company called Prometheus. This is a new one. I haven't had any experience with it. It's got kind of a push button action that when you push that top button down, it springs open and allows you to kind of get a... The thing I like about it is that it allows you to get a really positive feel. Some people have a tough time with the Zycar doing the one-handed, I think because it has this kind of you know, V-cut way that it, when it closes, where this is more of just a straight compression. Did, did a pretty good job, too. I've never yeah. used one personally. However, I know Prometheus makes some really nice lighters, and they make one of my all-time favorite semi-disposable pipe lighters, which I love. There you go. Do you want to talk See about... That Actually, I like that cutter, Ben. It's I, heavy. It's got a lot of weight to it. Just it's like actually, and it's, you know what? It's and not it, very. It really slides through that very easily. There's and it's it's seventy dollars, so it's not nearly as expensive as some of the other ones that we we have here nice too. Nice clean cut. One of the other things that we do carry, we we carry things that are metal cutters. That uh, in the old days, I remember Zeno when they first came out. Their the ring gauge on these, in terms of how big of a cigar you get in, maybe was like 50, 48, 52 ring gauge. In the years since then, cigars like the My Father, um, some of the bigger ring gauges like JFR that we carry, some of the uh, Tatuaje brand, um, Don Pepin, whatever, where you have these cigars that have a larger ring gauge, uh, Gran Habano, or some of the ones that come to mind, they have ring gauges which are above a 52. We're talking 54, we're talking a 60 ring gauge. When we say ring gauge, the way it's measure measured is in 60 fourths of an inch. So if you said it's a 64 ring gauge, you have a cigar that's one inch across, which is which is pretty, pretty large. I would say for myself and John, we tend to stick with things that are about a 50, about a 52. A 50, 50, 52, a standard. Robusto size uh, uh, cigar. Um, one thing I, want, I do want to mention too, in, and I have to credit this to our manager here, Mike Gallagher, who... Uh, um, Who's currently sitting off camera, feeding right. us lines and handing us things. <laughs> and making faces, of course, yes. <laughs> The, the, the V cutter.